2, James chapter uh, number 2, and I think we're on part 4, I believe, tonight, or part 3, it looks like, tonight in regards to uh, our series that we've been on on Wednesday night. It's your spirit, therefore what? It's your responsibility. It's your spirit, and therefore, because of it, it's your uh, responsibility. Our text verse that we looked at as you're turning to James uh, was Proverbs where it says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like unto a city that is broken down uh, and without walls. And so uh, God says uh, it's uh, he that hath no rule over what? His own spirit. And so God says uh, it's your spirit and uh, you better guard it. And uh, because Satan's going to do everything that he can to try to, to, to rob your spirit of what his, his intention is, is to be able to commune with God and uh, to be able to sense uh, God's um, uh, purpose and plan and direction in your life. And, of course, we rec recognize from first uh, from um, Daniel being an excellent spirit. We also learn from Proverbs that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. And uh, all of us have been wounded, but we have to go through the right process to not allow that wound to cause our spirit to become wounded. And, and so we've got to guard that. And that's all a part of our soul that we talked about on Sunday with our soul prospering. Now, if, if I'm responsible for my spirit, then I've got to do everything I can to protect my spirit. Uh, if I'm discouraged, how can I encourage you? So I have to protect my encourager to be able to encourage you when I might be feeling uh, discouraged at the moment of the hour. So I've got to guard my spirit. Uh, if I'm uh, downtrodden and uh, saddened and um, uh, things of that nature, I've got to guard my spirit so that I can, so if I'm always discouraged, so here's a couple. Uh, if you're always discouraging your spouse, who should be your number one encourager, you're discouraging your encourager. And that uh, you need to encourage and build up and edify the encourager, your spouse, because during a difficult time or challenging time, you want to be encouraged by them. But so often, those that care about us and love us the most cannot encourage us because we're always dumping on them. We're always uh, unloading on them, and we're discouraging them so they can't encourage us. And so we saw, number one, you protect your spirit by not discouraging yourself through your own personal negative thoughts. Uh, I am my own worst discourager. You are your own worst discourager uh, by the thoughts that you think. There's no more influential person in your life than you because there's no one else other than you that talks more to you than you do. And, I mean, you're always talking to yourself. And as something happens uh, in your life and your mind just begins to tell you all these different things. And uh, something, someone says something, your mind, you all of a sudden uh, is talking to yourself. And so uh, you better learn how to control the thoughts you think because the thoughts you think are very important uh, because it's going to determine, as we learned on Sunday night, the feelings that we feel, and the whole process all the way down the course. And so I've got to determine that. And so I, I, I've got to guard uh, that which is putting thoughts into my mind. I've got to guard that if I'm going to think right thoughts. And if I'm thinking right thoughts, I'll have right emotions. If I'm thinking wrong thoughts, I'm going to have, and so we're all the way down the line as uh, we look at the, uh, the, the uh, digression there. So I've got to protect uh, the thoughts that I think. I can't, listen, not everything you think do you have to dwell upon. I, don't, I can't control every thought that the devil throws as a dart at me uh, to discourage me and, and cause me to become disheartened or to become a doubtful or, or, or uh, to feel defeated. I can't allow that. I've got to bring every thought into captivity for what? The obedience of Christ. The obedience of Christ. Because if I allow my thoughts to get out of control, I'll become a disobedient Christian. So I've got to have obedient thoughts. And if it doesn't line me up to serve God, then I can't, I can't think those thoughts. I've got to decide. So I've got, I can't discourage myself uh, from that. And then we saw last time uh, I protect my spirit uh, by um, refusing to lose hope. We looked at 2 Thessalonians where it talked about good hope through grace. And uh, if I lose hope, uh, hope is nothing more than that confident expectation uh, that we embrace grace. We embrace grace. Uh, and uh, that grace we embrace allows our spirit to be protected. And um, uh, if you don't, grace is available for whatever you're going through. But if you don't choose to embrace the grace, then you'll become, uh, your spirit will become wounded. The Bible says a wounded spirit who can bear. I have grace 
to be on top side no matter what's going on on the inside. I have grace to be able to move forward no matter what's trying to resist me and pulling me back. I've got the grace, but I must. I've got to embrace the grace and not resist or push away the grace of God. Tonight, though, let me give you this verse in James chapter 3. The Bible says in verse uh, number, beginning verse number 2, for in many things... We offend all. God says, you're not going to live life and have any relationships whatsoever where you're not going to offend people. He says, we all do that. And uh, before you get all in a wad uh, because someone offended you, uh, recognize that you also on multiple occasions have offended many other people. Uh, you're not the only one that's been offended. You're not the only one that's been unjustly uh, accused. You're not the only one that unkind things were said. You're not the only one. And, and you also have done those same things. So it says, in many things we offend all. And then it goes on to say this, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Tonight, I want to focus on another way, and these are all areas that I try to guard my spirit. Uh, I, I'm not um, uh, arrived or an expert in these areas, but these are all things that I've done. I've jotted down eight or ten things that I do to guard my spirit uh, because uh, I need to have a, a good, healthy spirit. And uh, why? Because that determines my fellowship with God. If my spirit is sickly, then my relationship and walk with God will be, uh, be uh, uh, sporadic and inconsistent. I've got to have a good spirit so I can, because that's what allows me to commune with God. That's what allows me to connect with God. My soul connects with you. My spirit connects with God. And if, God, if the devil can get our spirit through an offense or a hurt or, or a problem to cause my spirit to become wounded, then that affects my walk with God, and, and that's more than ever what I need during a time of discomfort or, or disappointment in my life. And so I've got to control, here's the thought now, number three, I protect my spirit by controlling the environment of the conversation. I control my, I guard my spirit by controlling the, the environment of my conversation. Now, I, I said initially, uh, I, I got to control the thoughts that I think. Okay, now I'm talking about the conversations that I place myself in, uh, the people that I associate with, the things I listen to, the things that I make available to me to, to influence me. I've got to guard. I've got, if I'm going to guard my spirit, it's your spirit. And if your spirit is, is wounded tonight, then every area of your life is going to be affected. Every decision you make uh, is going to be an a, a unsure decision. Every walk you take is going to be an unstable or step you take is going to be a, an unstable step. Why? Because your spirit is not healthy. It's wounded. And so you've got to learn to guard your spirit. And one way you guard the spirit, you say, my spirit's already been wounded. All right, you start implementing the things that guard your spirit. It gives your spirit time to heal. Many of us don't have time for our spirit to heal because we just look that we don't know what we're doing to guard it. And if you start putting up some of these guards, you can give your spirit ample time through the Word of God and through time and, and through the Holy Spirit of God and through uh, prayer, uh, your walk with God, where your spirit can become healed and healthy again. Uh, but you've got to know how to guard it. So I've got to control the environment of the conversation. A true indicator of spiritual maturity is revealed through your tongue. James 3, 2 says, uh, we offend all, but it says, uh, if any man offend not in word, that's the tongue. Uh, the Bible says he's a perfect man. It doesn't mean sinless. It means he's a mature person. Uh, a spiritually mature person uh, is one who's able to control the tongue. Brother uh, Blair is a horseman. Uh, he enjoys uh, riding horses. And uh, they talk about the bridle uh, in a horse. And that little bridle in and of itself that's so insignificant and small in comparison to the size of that horse can move in the direction of that horse. They talk about a rudder on a ship. And uh, so small uh, in relation to the hugeness of that, you know, the, the largeness of that ship. And, and yet that rudder is able to direct the course of that entire ship. They talk about a fire, a spark of fire. And so insignificant in and of itself, you light a match or turn on a lighter and, and it seems so harmless, but yet we've seen in our, our area even lately and across uh, the west coast of the, just a little spark 
the potential of that. And so God likens a tongue uh, to a, a bridle. It likens a tongue to a rudder on a ship. It likens a tongue to a, just a, a little uh, a spark of fire uh, that's, uh, that's there. And so there's a power uh, in the tongue. And so God says, uh, if there's power in the tongue, then uh, uh, the, the power of the tongue is, is given by God uh, with the power to what? To edify, but under a fallen sinful nature. How does Satan use our fallen tongue? To, if it's to edify as God's purpose for the tongue and to glorify God, then the devil wants to use our tongue to hurt and, uh, and wound the spirit. How many times things have been said to you and, and things have been spoken to you, and we say, well, sticks and stones, break my, my but names will never hurt me, but they do. And the Bible says it'll, it'll cause a, a wound in your spirit because there's a power in the voice. There's a power in the tongue. And we've got to control the, the conversation in regards to the spirit of myself and yourself in regards to the conversation taking place. Uh, the Bible says um, uh, everything he said needs, uh, uh, let's see, or not everything that is said needs to be said. Philippians 2.14. Turn there if you would real briefly, please. Uh, Philippians 2.14. 2.14, the Bible says, do all things. I like that. Uh, and, uh, and you know I've gone to Bible college, and, and I've got a lot of uh, education behind me, and I like to show it off every now and again. And uh, the Greek word for the word all, you got it? Ready? Here it is. It's all. That's what it means. Isn't that great? All those years of college, huh, Brother Sam? And, I mean, that's what it means. All means, oh, well, is, is, what about this instant? All. Uh, what about over here? All. What about in this? All. And so God says do all things, okay? So it's all-encompassing. So that means what? Everything, all of my life, every relationship, every circumstance, every day, every morning, 24-7, the command here is what? Do do. That's present tense all the time. I'm actively commanded to do something all the time. Always be on guard. Always be aware of what? Do all things without what? Murmurings and what? Disputings. God said, I want you to do everything else. Why? There's a power in your tongue. There's a power in your tongue. And uh, murmurings uh, is, uh, refers to emotional grumblings and dissatisfactions of the heart. It's that, you know, that grumbling about something. Well, what would you say? Nothing. It's that murmuring in your heart. You know, when your kids are, well, what would you say? No, nothing. Uh, and you said something. You're saying, you know, and we read right through that. Why? Because there's that murmuring. There's that, that uh, agitation. Uh, there's that uh, irritation, that emotional grumbling, dissatisfaction of the heart. Murmuring is a negative response to something unpleasant, inconvenient, disappointing, arising from the self-centered notion that it's undeserved. And uh, I, I deserve better than that. And that's something that I, I, I should have. And that's something that I want. And, and that's something I feel is best for me. Listen, that murmuring when you don't get what you want. Oh, you may never say it on the outside. But in your heart, you're murmuring. You see, long before you say the wrong thing, you're thinking the wrong thing. And uh, you're murmuring the wrong thing. And uh, then notice the word disputing. It says, so I want you to do all things, everything, all areas of your life, everything, without murmurings. That's that emotional grumbling on the inside. And, and so, so we've implemented uh, when you come to church. Uh, we want you to wear a mask when you come in. When you're seated, you can do what you want with that. When you get up and we leave, put on your mask and you leave. And, and when you do outside, do what you want. And, uh, and so we can grumble mum, uh, on the inside, emotional grumble, blah, 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 and put on the mask and go ahead and head outside or come on in. Uh, and so that's that emotional grumbling on the inside. By the way, I'm right with you, pal. Amen. I'm grumbling as I come in uh, with the best of them on all those things. And so it's an emotional grumbling, dissatisfaction, but the word disputing is where we, is a word that means, uh, uh, it's where we get the word uh, dialogue. It has a basic meaning of inner reasoning. The word soon developed in the notion of questioning, doubting, or disputing the truth. Of a matter. So a disputing is when you're talking to someone, you're already coming up with what you're going to say to un, 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 unnerve that or, or to counteract that or, or to uh, uh, you know, go against that. You're not listening to what's being said. That's that disputing. It's that inner reasoning, that questioning, that doubt that's on the inside of your heart. So God said, listen, I, I don't want you to have uh, at any time of your life, in any juncture of your life, concerning any circumstance of your life, to murmur and to have disputings in your heart where you're questioning and you're doubting and you're disputing the truth of the matter. Psalm uh, uh, 141.3 says, set 
a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth and keep the doors of my lips. Listen, we've got to guard uh, the conversation that we're saying. We have to guard the conversation that's being said. Why? Because my spirit has got to be guarded and there's power in words. I don't care what they say about me. I don't care. Your statement of I don't care shows us how much you care. You wouldn't say that if it didn't bother you. But I don't care. You do. You just told us you care. And uh, it's uh, uh, the absence of I don't care because you just allow uh, that response to what? Not murmur, not dispute, on the inside. And so he says here, uh, set a watch. Oh, Lord, you know what God's saying? You better put a guard in your old mouth. How many times, boy, open foot uh, or open mouth, amen, uh, hoof and mouth, these open mouth, insert foot, leg, knee, everything, the whole thing's going in. And we've all been there. It's like, why in the world did I say that? And God says, put a guard, put a guard. You don't have to say everything you're thinking. Now, we'd like to, but God says, you better put a guard on your mouth. Put a guard on your mouth or a watch on your mouth and, uh, and then uh, keep the door of your lips. You see, your words are a thermometer of your heart. Thermometer of the heart. Uh, that's why I love to listen to people talk. I'd rather listen than be listened to in a conversation because I can see and hear and perceive the condition of someone's heart by listening. By listening. Uh, why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And uh, as you listen to what's being said, you're able to begin to hear what's truly important, what's truly of value. If someone's always talking about uh, money, then you know what's on their heart. If oh, someone's always talking about sports, then you know what's on their heart. If someone's always talking uh, about their kids, then you know what's in their heart. If someone's always uh, talking about whatever it might be, that's on their heart. It's important to them. And, uh, and you can begin to see uh, what's leading and directing God in their life. And so we've got to feed our, our, so, so we see then, as we look at this thought where the Bible says, I've got to guard my mouth, set a, a guard and a watch in front of my lips. And so when you talk, what you talk about is serious uh, because God wants you to know uh, he doesn't want you to complain. Now, let me give you this verse, and I want to build on this tonight. Ephesians chapter 4 in verse number 29. Ephesians chapter 4 in verse number 29. We're talking about guarding our spirit, guarding our spirit. And uh, let me give you some thoughts here that I've jotted down that I think will help us on this, this verse especially. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now, I understand that's focusing on us talking, but I'm concerned about listening to that talk uh, because that's going to affect my spirit. And if I'm talking that way, then it shows a condition in my heart, which means that my spirit has already been wounded and my spirit is not healthy. And because I've surrounded myself with corrupt communication. You don't just start... Uh, communicating corruptly unless you, because it's out of your heart. And, uh, and so you've exposed yourself to some things. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of what? Edifying. So we see the purpose now of communication is to build up, that's what edifying, that it might what? Minister grace unto the hearers. Well, they don't deserve me talking to them that way. Well, but that's not the purpose of Corrupt communication, corrupt communication uh, wants to do things that are not going to minister grace. It's not going to edify, going to tear down. So the word corrupt there in verse 29, let no corrupt communication. The word corrupt uh, is a word that depicts something that's putrid or rotten. Putrid or rotten. Putrid, I looked up, and here it means, describes meat that has gone so bad that it emits a foul smell. And you know that, uh, that garage refrigerator that you forgot that hamburger in or you forgot that whatever in, you open it up, it's, oh, man. And, I mean, it's putrid. And uh, that smell just uh, comes out. The word rotten describes fruit that is spoiled, decayed, and sickening to the taste. And uh, uh, with the, the last week or so, uh, every time we come in the garage, we'd, we'd clean out the garage, we'd do a little painting and, and things and got it all uh, situated. But, but the, the last week, we'd walk in and be like, man, it's something's dead in here. It stinks. And, uh, and so I'd leave the side door open, and even one day I came home, and half the garage was open just trying to air it out. And, and I said, man, it's, something's dead in here. There's a rat or mouse or something's dead. And uh, we never could find it. And then uh, one day my wife uh, said to me, uh, as we were coming inside, I said, hey, I said, it doesn't smell quite so bad. She said, I found what was smelling. She said, I said, you did? She says, yeah. I went. Uh, to get a potato, 
and I found the, the culprit. There it was, that rotten pota uh, potato that was there and just with a stench uh, through the, 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 the garage that left there. And that's what the Bible likens under corrupt communication. Uh, it's nasty. It's putrefying effect on others. Now I want to uh, focus a little bit on what corrupt communication is. And I've jotted a few things down that I think uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, as, uh, as I was jotting some things down here, uh, obviously, and we won't look for the sake of time on some of these for the simplicity of it, uh, but vulgarity. Vulgarity uh, is corrupt communication. Never at any time uh, should any child of God, uh, in regards of what environment you find yourself in or how many times you hit your uh, 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 finger with a hammer or uh, whatever else might be, uh, we ought not to ever allow vulgarity to come out of, out, of, out, of, out of a man of God or a woman of God as a child of God. That's corrupt communication. You say everybody else is doing that, talking that way at work. Yeah, but maybe you could let your light shine and not talk that way. And it'd be a little easier to say, I'd appreciate if you wouldn't talk that way if we weren't talking that way. And maybe they'd feel a little bit uncomfortable talking that way if they knew we didn't talk that way and we weren't supportive of the way they talk. It takes more courage to say, I appreciate if you wouldn't talk in that vulgarity than to talk along with them everyone, everyone else is talking that way. Vulgar. Listen, you've been in the military. I've played professional sports. We've been around in the world. You work in a secular environment. Uh, you've got unsafe family and friends. You work in the police force. You're in the military. All around us. Listen, there's vulgarity, but it doesn't make it right for a child of God at any time, at any ever way. Do all things. What? You've got to do it at all times of your life. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. None whatsoever. And if it does accidentally come out, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, mean, I, I didn't mean to say that. That's wrong to say. And oftentimes new Christians, we get talking to them, all of a sudden they'll start saying some stuff, and that's just for what they're used to. But the longer you get saved, God begins to change your speech. And you don't have to be talking that way. Uh, and if you've been saved for any length of time, shame on you. Shame on you uh, if you're still using vulgarity. Uh, and what's that mean? If you're watching stuff on television where you're hearing vulgarity, you're not guarding your spirit. The more you hear vulgarity, the more familiar you become with it, the more desensitized you become with it, and the more likely you're going to be saying it and not even know you're saying it. And you better guard your spirit. Vulgarity is corrupt communication. I've said it, uh, the, what we have at home is curse-free TV, and uh, it hooks into uh, your cable box, or it can hook into your satellite, or it can hook into the back of your TV, and uh, through the closed captioning uh, signal, uh, it, uh, it'll go through that before it goes through all the other things, get your television, and if there's any vulgarity at all, it mutes it, and uh, there's a, a pause of mute, and then it kicks back in again. Might be wise uh, to look into that. Next one on corrupt communication is slang. Slang. That's, uh, that's vulgarity that we've sort of sugarcoated. Uh, it's things that we uh, say uh, that uh, has the same implication or connotation as vulgarity. Uh, shoot. Okay. Uh, that would be slang. And a fudge. That would be slang. And well, I didn't say the, the vulgar word. Yeah, but everybody else knows you're right around it. And we don't want to give the appearance of evil in regards to using slang. And uh, praise the Lord. That would be good. Amen. And uh, hit your thumb next time. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, but we've got to guard. Let no corrupt communication. I've got to guard my spirit. And so I don't want the communication I'm surrounding myself with to defile and wound my spirit. Worldly talk uh, is, uh, is corrupt uh, communication. Worldly talk. And uh, things that are of the world. Uh, we ought to be talking about movies we've been watching. Or, uh, and, uh, and there's not much movies worth watching. And uh, we shouldn't be talking about uh, what's going on down uh, at, a, at a nightclub or down at the uh, bar or down at uh, uh, what's going on over here. And uh, we slept with so-and-so over here. All that kind of stuff. Listen, just worldly talk. That's going to defile your spirit. Uh, 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 un ungodly jokes. Dirty jokes. Uh, it's going to defile your spirit. got to guard your spirit. Guard your spirit. It's your spirit, and you better make sure it's healthy. And there's all kinds of worldly talk out there, and you better guard it. Comedians, be careful with that, and uh, uh, listen to comedians, and uh, through the avenue of joking and laughter, and it's worldly talk, and uh, it's worldly sliding in there. Uh, let's make sure we watch that. Uh, let's look in Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at a few of these with the verses here real quick. We'll be uh, winding down tonight. Ephesians chapter 4. 
in verse number 31. These are all uh, things that God tells us we, that would make up corrupt communication. There's a bunch of them. You might be surprised. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number uh, 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Uh, the Bible says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, here it is, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. God says, I want you to, uh, evil speaking uh, is uh, corrupt communication. Uh, well, you say, well, what's evil speaking? we got to understand what evil is first. Sin is anything that you do uh, that, uh, that uh, hurts yourself. Sin, though, that is growing becomes evil. Sin fermented becomes evil. What's that mean? It not only hurts me, but it now has the intention of hurting you. And, and so evil communication. And, and so um, that's what the Bible says you overcome evil with good. Our natural response when someone hurts you is to get back at them. You've just fed evil, the evil monster, and it's just going to keep going on momentum. So you overcome evil. How? You overcome evil with good. Good always overcomes evil. And it's not natural, it's not normal, but it's what uh, spiritual people do that try to overcome that. So evil speakings, that's slander, gossip. Uh, that's a tail-bearing, criticism. Anything said with the intention to hurt someone else uh, would, be, um, would be evil speaking. Let me give you a couple of the verses that go with that. Uh, we'll look at a lot of these here in Proverbs. It uh, talks about the tongue a lot. And I go to Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26 and look uh, at a couple of verses here. We're talking about evil speaking. And uh, i got to guard my spirit. I can't surround myself uh, in a conversation that's, that's trying to tear someone down or, or try to uh, belittle someone or criticize someone or anything. i got to guard that. Uh, Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. And um, let's go down to, to verse number uh, 22. Chapter 26, verse 22. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. Wounds? What are they trying to wound? Your spirit. Your spirit. The tail bear is what? That's a gossip. Uh, that's the one that, that's trying to hurt you and uh, unjustly uh, 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 talk about you and be unkind about you. And God says that tail bear, the what? The words. The words of a tail bear are as wounds and they go down in the innermost parts of the belly. What's that? That's your spirit. Trying to wound your spirit. A tail bear. Gossiping about you, talking about you. Let me give you another verse. Go look at verse 24, same chapter. Uh, he that uh, hateth disassembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. What it says, you got a hatred in your heart, you're going to do everything you can to disassemble with his lips. I'm going to tear you apart. I'm going to ruin your life. I'm gonna, and, he, and he begins to speak, use his mouth to disassemble that one he hates. Evil, evil speaking. Uh, let's look, look at another. Go back to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11 and uh, verse number 9. God says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. I've got to guard my spirit. How do I do that? I I've got to control the environment that, I that I'm in, conversation environment. Why? Because my spirit is so important. I cannot allow the environment to control me. I must control the environment. And, and that's how you're going to guard your spirit. If you don't, then your spirit will get wounded. Here it is, Proverbs 11, verse, uh, verse number 9. A hypocrite. And hypocrite with his what? Mouth. We always talk about a hypocrite uh, is someone that lives one way, uh, or, you know, lives one way, uh, two, two lies. Uh, it talks about like a, a mask he wears, a, and you wear a mask, you take it off. Uh, we think of a person's life as being a hypocrite. The Bible says here, the hypocrite, uh, in, uh, in this verse here, uh, verse number 9, says what? With his mouth he destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. And so the hypocrite uh, is using his mouth, evil, evil speaking. And, and so uh, we've got to guard that. So vulgarity, slang, worldly talk, evil speaking. Uh, let's go to this from Proverbs uh, chapter uh, 6, Proverbs, uh, or chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 5. And uh, as we look at um, corrupt communication, guarding my spirit, guarding my spirit. Um, here it is in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 5, and uh, look at verse number 3. For the lips of a strange woman, look at the thought there, lips, all right? So we're talking about the mouth. A drop as a honeycomb, and her what? Her mouth is smoother than oil, uh, but her end thereof is bitter as wormwood, sharp as what? A two-edged sword. Uh, let's go down to another verse. Let's go to um, uh, Proverbs chapter six, uh, Proverbs chapter seven, 
and uh, verse number 21, Proverbs chapter 7 and uh, verse 21, uh, the Bible says again referencing uh, the, uh, the, the fair speech uh, of that uh, strange woman with her much fair speech. She caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. Uh, this is talking about that strange woman that's out to destroy and ruin and wreak havoc on, on a man of God, but it can also be a strange man that's trying to wreak havoc and ruin on a good uh, uh, young lady of God. And how, do, how does she do it? How does she destroy? The Bible says the, the, the lips. And, and so we see that uh, sensual talk is uh, not good for my spirit. Sensual talk is not good. Uh, dial, uh, you know, the, the number, and, and someone on a phone will talk to you sensually. That's not good for your spirit. Uh, you'll watch a, a program or, or, or a TV or a movie or a sitcom or whatever, and uh, a sensual conversations will be said. You'll hear it. Not good for your spirit. A co-worker, a, a lady cross your path, fellas, and uh, uses, the Bible says, uh, with, uh, with her lips and fair speech and, and cause them what? To yield. How does strong man yield with her lips? Why do you yield with the way she talks? So a sensual talk uh, is, is, a, is a corrupt communication. Uh, let's look at uh, Proverbs chapter 6 and uh, look at verse number 14. So we've got vulgarity and slang and worldly talk, evil speaking, sensual talk. Uh, how about this one, Proverbs chapter 6 and uh, verse, verse number 14. Chapter 6, 14, forwardness. Is in, is in the heart, uh, uh, is in his heart, he devises mischief continually. Notice what it says. He soweth discord. He soweth discord. Uh, and so here's the next one. Sowers of discord is corrupt communication. Hey, did you hear about? And they're sowing discord. They're trying to cause some tension and, and, and contention and, and uh, uh, strife in, in a relationship. Jump over to chapter 16 of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 27. Uh, I'm talking about guarding my spirit. Uh, I've got to guard my spirit. I've got to guard my spirit. And the way I, one of the ways you guard your spirit, you've got to control the environment. Uh, you may have to walk away uh, when folks are talking that way. You may have to, to make, break a break uh, with a relationship because of the talk that's being said. Listen, your spirit is your spirit, and you've got to guard it because that determines our walk with God. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse uh, 27. Uh, the Bible says, An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. An ungodly person digs up evil. Hey, that's one of the things. What's the control in the, the conversation? That's where you go on, on, on Facebook and uh, uh, different uh, social media accounts. You know what they do? They dig up. The Bible says what? Uh, he diggeth up. The ungodly man diggeth up evil. In his lips there is a burning fire. That's an evil person. It doesn't justify uh, the truth of maybe that is being exposed, but you don't know if that truth has been uh, dealt with or not. Uh, recently, uh, individuals come up and, and uh, maybe something happened years ago and uh, they dealt with it. They got right with God. They're serving God. And years later, someone finds out about it and they dig it up and they put it online they post it they get it on the virtual uh, reality, reality out there and now they dig it up and ruin someone's life ruin someone's marriage ruin someone's home and it's already been dealt with and cared for years ago but they turn the God, bible calls that what it calls that person an ungodly man Listen, the only reason you surf the Internet and have your Facebook and thing is, is, to, is, to, is to scope out uh, the latest scuttlebutt and dig up all the trash and garbage of everybody else, then, uh, then you're, not, you're not helping the spirit uh, of yourself. Uh, the Bible says his mouth, uh, uh, where it says his mouth, his lips, are as a burning fire. A burning fire. And, and so we see about the sowers of discord. Let me give you another verse. Go to Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26. A lot of things talk about the tongue, the mouth, all through uh, Proverbs. You, why? Because God says, devil's going to use everything he can. He may not get you through vul vulgarity, but maybe he'll get you through worldly talk. He may not get you through worldly talk, but maybe he'll get you through sensual. He may not get you through this, but he might get you through this. He's trying to get your spirit. So you've got to be aware and sensitive to the words that are going on all around you. You're oblivious to it. You should be aware of it because it's still affecting your spirit. Proverbs chapter um, 26 in verse number 28. Proverbs chapter 26 in verse number 28. The Bible says, a lying tongue hateth uh, those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth 
worketh what? Ruin. A flattery mouth. You say, well, what's that? Uh, that's corrupt communication. What's a flattery mouth? That's someone that tells you something you want to hear. By the way, they're a dime a dozen. They're a dime a dozen. Finding someone that agrees with what you want to be agreed by. Uh, you you want to break up a, a divorce your spouse? There's a bunch of folks out there that will flatter you to help you agree uh, to what you're already wanting to do anyway. You're just trying to find someone that will flatter you, not someone that will be honest enough to speak the truth to you. And God says you're going to go what? To ruin because you want someone to tell you what you want to hear, not someone that tells you what you need to hear. And, uh, and of course, that's uh, another corrupt communication, um, a flattering mouth. Uh, here's another one. Go to, um, we'll come back to that in a little bit because that's in James. But let's, let's stay in Proverbs. Go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29 and look in uh, verse uh, number 11. Verse number 11 of uh, 29. The Bible says, uh, again, corrupt communication. The Bible says, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. A fool utters his mind. What's it mean? You just ramble and ramble and ramble, and you just unveil your whole self of who you are uh, to someone uh, without having any discretion, uh, any uh, uh, understanding, uh, any wisdom whatsoever uh, that uh, God teaches here that you ought to have in regards to what? An unbridled tongue. A fool uttereth all his mind. Just goes on and 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 just, just unveils everything. An unbridled tongue is a corrupt tongue. Listen, I've got a guard. I've got a guard. I'll have some folks will come off and they'll just start to unlock. Oh, hold it, hold it. I don't need to hear all the details of, of what just happened in your life to help you. I don't need the details. I don't want to hear the details. I've got to protect my spirit. There's a lot of garbage out there if I had to listen to all the details of it and still have a good spirit. I don't want to hear all that garbage. I want to be exposed to all that. I got a spirit. I got a guard. And so uh, the Bible talks about the, uh, the unbridled tongue. Look down at verse number 20, the same um, chapter, let's see, the, the same chapter, chapter 29, verse 11, uh, said, a fool uttereth all his mind. And then skip down to verse number 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There's more hope of a fool. Now, there's no hope for a fool, but God says, uh, that, uh, uh, look at the verse here uh, where it says he just uttereth all, uh, where the Bible says, um, see that he's hasting his word. He says there's more hope of a fool than of him. And God says there's no hope for a fool. But God says there's more hope of, this, of a fool than of this guy. What's he doing? He's hasty with his words, unbridled tongue. He's not thinking before he's, think, he's speaking. He's just rambling. He's just talking. He's ranting and raving. He's sharing his heart. Uh, he's doing whatever he can. He's just exposing himself with no idea whatsoever uh, of anything that he's doing. Uh, and uh, God says, that's a fool. Or there's more hope of a fool than someone who's uh, uh, of um, unbridled tongue. Hasty uh, answer. Uh, and so we see, um, of course, on this thought here, we see on this thought, see that man that is hasty in his words. Uh, listen, uh, when, when, when it's time to seek God's face, and uh, I'll, I'll often say this in counseling. I'll, I'll give some information, and uh, I'll give uh, sim several options. I'll give, give a, a, a game plan or, or a, a solution or a, a prescription for them to do. And I'll say, no, before you answer, I want you to go home. I want you to think about this. I want you to ponder this. Because a fool is going to utter his mind and say, I'm not doing it. A wise man says, well, I'll think about that. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. But hasty in his words. You don't even take time to think about it. And uh, God says that's, that's not wise. That's not good. And here's another one, Proverbs 10, verse 11. This gets a lot of us here maybe that, that are um, into some of these um, uh, games, gamers here. Uh, this, is, this might get some of us. Um, Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 11. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. This is the next one, a violent tongue. Uh, we hear it on the, on, uh, even, even sometimes on, on school where they're out playing. I'm going to kill you. Where in the world did they hear that? That's a violent tongue. That's a violent tongue. And we're learning it from what? These violent games 
that we're allowing our kids to be exposed to and play by hours, and we've got this violence of a ton. Oh, and I mean, things are being said like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not, that's not going to protect your spirit if you're always around someone that's so violent and so uh, easily tempered and angered and ready to just, at the drop of a hat, just go at it. That's a violent tongue. And boy, I mean, you'll, you'll see him. Uh, we, were, we were walking around, around the lake, and uh, my wife and I, and uh, we uh, were walking in early in the morning. And as we were walking around, another couple was coming by, and uh, they had a mask on. We didn't have a mask on, but we, we passed with plenty of distance there. And, uh, man, the guy all of a sudden, and, and uh, I didn't pay any attention. And, and my wife says, boy, they were cussing us out. I said, they were, yeah, because we weren't wearing a mask. We weren't wearing a mask. I mean, just violent words, violent. And uh, God says that's, that's not wise, or that's not right. Go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter, we okay? Proverbs chapter 10, we're almost done. Proverbs chapter 10, just talking about guarding your spirit. There's a kind of corrupt communication you better guard against. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. What's the next type? It's foolish talk. The mouth of the foolish is near destruction. What's foolish talk? God doesn't love me. Oh, that's foolish. Foolish. God can never use me. That's foolish. God will never forgive me of what I've done. Foolish. And what's the Bible say about that? It says, uh, uh, but the mouth of the foolish, you're near destruction. It's not what you've not done or the imperfections of the failings you have in your life. It's how you're talking that causes you to come to a near, near a destruction. Listen, I don't want to associate with people that are always, you, 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 God didn't have a plan for your life. Uh, God doesn't love you. And uh, why would God want to use you? And uh, God didn't care about you. And uh, that's foolish talk. You know better than that. God does love you. God does care about you. Things may not go the way you want it. Things may not be happening the way you want it. But quit being a foolish talker. That's not good for your spirit. And a lot of us are around people that are always talking foolish talk. Foolish talk uh, is wrong. It's uh, uh, not right. And uh, give me two more. We're almost done. Go to Proverbs chapter 10. We're still there. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10. Look in verse 31. And i am just highlighted a few as I went through these. The mouth of the just, verse 31, uh, bringeth forth wisdom. Now, just as much as the power of a negative tongue, the opposite of all of these is, is the benefit of a good tongue. And so as destructive as a corrupt communication is, is as beneficial as good communication. Because a fire can cause a forest fire, or it can heat a stove and cook a meal or turn on a furnace. It has good qualities, too, uh, and it also has powerful negative qualities. So Proverbs 10, 31, uh, God says, um, the mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue, froward tongue, shall be cut off, cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness, frowardness. It's an interesting word. It's used several times throughout the Bible. It talks about a froward person. Uh, it uh, talks about uh, us even being froward ourselves. This time, though, it talks about a frowardness of what? Our tongue, our mouth. Having a froward tongue. And, uh, and what is a froward tongue? Uh, that's words that are spoken out of place. That's words that are spoken presumptuously when you have no idea what the future holds. Well, we're going to do, and you list all the things you're going to do. God says, that's corrupt communication. You have no idea that's going to happen. You have no idea that's going to come. Yeah, we're going to do this and this and this and this and this. We're going to do this and we're going to accomplish this. We're going to do this. And God says, that's a froward tongue. What makes you think that that's my will for your life? What makes you think that that's what I want to accomplish with your life? What makes you think that's even going to come to pass? Like you think it's, like you're talking it's going to come to pass. Uh, you better recognize if the Lord will. It will. If the Lord doesn't, it won't. If the Lord doesn't, I don't want it to happen because I don't want to not have what isn't God's will because I'll not be satisfied outside of God's will. And so a forward tongue is always presumptuous in their conversation and talk as though they know everything when you don't know beyond the moment of now to be talking in a presumptuous, 
forward tongue. And, and as we look at this, the Bible says the righteous of the lips of the righteous, verse 32, know it is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. And God says in verse 31, it should be cut out. You see, the tongue's pretty important to God. Corrupt communication is pretty important to God. He said, why is it so important? I'll tell you why. It affects your spirit. And that's why Satan uses this little bridle, this little rudder, this little, little spark of fire to cause, yes, a lot of good things can happen. A lot of good directions can be accomplished. But it can cause a lot of, of havoc. Here's the last one I wanted to show you. Go back to James, where we started, James chapter 3. And these are just a, 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 a smidgen of the iceberg, tip of the iceberg of, of all the things. might be a good uh, word study for you to look at the tongue, the lips, the mouth. And you might be um, uh, amazed at how often God references the mouth. And why is that? Because it's a reflection of the heart. It affects your spirit. And I want my spirit to be right. If I'm talking and doing all this stuff, then it's a reflection that I don't have a good spirit. My spirit is wounded. Wounded people, um, yeah, perfect example. You get wounded, you're more likely, blank, 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 right, because you're wounded. You're like, more likely to say a lot of things you ought not to say when you're wounded. Same way with your spirit. And, and so God says, here it is, James chapter, um, let's see, James chapter 3 and uh, verse, uh, verse number 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member, here it is now, then, and boasteth great things. Boastful talking. A boastful tongue is a corrupt tongue. Always braggadocious. Look how good I am. Hey, if you've got to always toot your horn or make everyone else uh, recognize how good you're doing so they can toot your horn, uh, you're, that's corrupt communication. That's corrupt communication. Y your spirit's not good. You don't have a healthy spirit. And uh, you, you shouldn't have to uh, be having to always brag on yourself. And, uh, and brag uh, on, on all your accomplishments and brag uh, on how good you are and brag about this and that and everything else. Uh, we shouldn't thrive on boasting and our ego and how good and wonderful we are uh, because that's corrupt communication. That's what uh, the, the tongue does. It's a world of iniquity. What's it do? It boasts. It boasts. It's, oh, I know. I know this is right. Oh, that sounds like a boastful tongue. And uh, I know this is, is the best. Oh, maybe that's a boastful tongue. I don't know. Uh, boy, you see how good I am? I got this thing under control. Oh, a boastful tongue. And that God says, that's not good communication. That's not helping your spirit. That's not helping the spirit of others. And tonight, if we're going to be a people that guards our spirit, because my spirit is what's going to encourage and help you as I get connected with God and I want to be able to be a good help to you. I want you to be a good help to the rest of us. But if you're not guarding your environment of conversation, what you listen to, what you read, what you watch, uh, who you surround yourself with, who you Facebook friend, uh, who you follow on Twitter, what blurbs come up on your, your face your, or your uh, home screen, all these things, you better guard your, your environment of conversation because if not, it's going to hurt your spirit. And your spirit is so important. Because if your spirit's wounded, the Bible says, who can bear? Who can bear? And Satan's out to wound your spirit. Because if you have a wounded spirit, you're less likely to understand your need and significance and importance of walking with God. More than ever. More than ever. Father, thank you for the message tonight as you've challenged all of us. That Lord, again, learn how to guard our spirit. Our spirit is guarded by our tongue and uh, conversation and the lips and the mouth. All that's around us, Lord, we better guard what we're listening to. We better guard what we're listening to through our eyes that we read. We better guard it uh, because it's going to leave an impact on our lives, Lord. Tonight, with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, maybe some of us, maybe many of us, uh, God has spoken to our hearts and says, I need to make some adjustments with my tongue, my mouth, my lips. Uh, maybe it's saying I need to guard who I hang out with, who I associate with. Maybe it means me standing up for right and saying I appreciate you not talking that way. Oh, I couldn't do that. Uh, you, you imagine what they'll make fun of me. Yeah, but someone's 
you got to guard your spirit. Is it not worth guarding your spirit to have a little folks ridicule you? Look at the source of the ridicule. Maybe it's the company you're keeping. Maybe it's the television programs you're watching. And it's affecting your spirit. Your spirit. Turn it off. Change the channel. Guard your spirit. It's so important. Father, bless our invitation tonight. Lord, help us to be a people of God who have a mouth set apart for you. And they will guard the mouths of those around us to guard our spirit. We don't have to listen to that joke around the cooler. We don't have to listen to that, uh, what happened last weekend with a coworker. We don't have to, to listen to all that kind of stuff. Father, we need to guard that environment. Our heads are bowed. Let's all stand tonight. God has challenged us concerning how we talk and the talk we listen to. How is your conversation? How is the environment of your conversation? It maybe can be better. It ought to be improved upon. Well, that's good. But mom and dad, you ought not to be using corrupt communication in your home. Don't be using that in your home towards your spouse, towards your kids. Siblings in the home ought not to be using that type of language in the home. There's so much more to corrupt communication than just swearing, vulgarity. We've looked at, I don't know, 12 or 13 of them just briefly tonight, just randomly through different scriptures. The tongue. Your life will be influenced positively or negatively by the words and lips of others. Because it determines the condition of your spirit. The condition of my spirit. Let's be good in our tongues. Good in our conversation. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the challenge tonight to just remind us how important what we say is. So many times we've said some hurtful things to our spouse. Lord, words that that have not edified, words that have not ministered grace to the hearers. It's been corrupt communication. And we maybe have even wounded the spirit of a spouse, of a child, of a parent, of a sibling of a fellow church member, of you, God. We maybe have offended you by the words we've said to you. So, God, tonight I pray that you would help us, Lord, to put a watch, a guard about our mouth and lips. Help us to filter everything through that which is think on these things. Because if I'm thinking on these things, then I'm going to be speaking the right things. Well, give us a good... Rest of the week, a blessed night. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.